done pretty much absolutely nothing but uh, catch up on bills and paperwork the last day and a half. And it has done nothing but rain the last day and a half. Um, I think we got somewhere, I, I don't even know how much rain we got, honestly, a lot. Um, but it is a brisk 55 degrees out this morning. So the temperature dropped a lot. It got down in the low 50s last night. So I'm wearing a sweatshirt for the first time and uh, since like last winter. So um, probably won't be in the field a whole, whole lot the next few days. But I am going to get some stuff ready. Um, possibly to switch to corn. Um, I don't know how dry it is. It was testing about 23 the last time I nosed into it. And that was about a week ago. But it has rained a lot since then. So I don't know um, where we are at moisture wise now. But uh, probably going to get that ready hook up the real disc to the Steiger today either the real disc or the actual disc and uh, probably go spread a little bit of um, cover crop I don't know or I might drill some into some of the waterways but um, as muddy as it is I'll be spreading today but um, I don't know we'll see how that goes Another thing I have to do today is get this filthy combine a little bit cleaned up. Um, unfortunately, it did get rained on. Um, and since all the dust had already stuck to it, I figured I'd just leave it in the rain and try and let it get rinsed off some. It really didn't get rinsed off at all. So I did open the, the gate for the grain tank here. That way it would uh, let all the water out of the grain tank. I don't like doing that, but um, yeah, I don't I don't like getting the combine wet at all, really. But it's filthy now. But I've got a few things to do, like I've got to adjust this. I need to adjust my clean elevator chain again. It keeps coming a little bit loose. A little looser than I'd like it to be. So, got a little bit to do on this, but not too much. And Last but not least, work on the office some more. Um, since I'm really not in the field, um, I may as well work on it too when I get a chance. So basically I've got everything wired. Um, I haven't hooked the power up to it yet, but that's pretty easy. Um, but I've been cutting holes. These are gonna go in the ceiling um, it's pretty thin stuff, but uh, that's going to go on the ceiling. Been cutting holes in that so I can get my lights in. Um, they're basically like can lights or real similar to them. Um, I am going to put a sink in here, so that'll be nice. But this will be an office, basically a parts room, and then a stairway that I have yet to build that's going to go up here. And across, I'm gonna cut a hole there, close that off, cut a hole here. That'll all be part storage up there as well. So, should be pretty nice when I'm done with it. But, uh, plenty to do. I'm just working on this as I get time, but I do have all the outlets tied together now. And before somebody comments, yes, technically, you're supposed to put those in after the fact of getting your walls up, but the way I'm doing it, it'll work this way too. So, got a couple light switches to do yet. Um, but kind of tying my lights together and I got lucky um, this outlet right here is actually the only thing that this wire goes to so I followed this wire back to the breaker box and literally this wire goes across the shop over there to the breaker box and that outlet's the only thing it's hooked to so since that's 12-2 wire there we're just going to tie in this entire office into that breaker it's a 20 amp breaker and for no more than what i'm going to be doing in here running a computer and some lights that'll be just fine so that'll work that'll work for sure so back to the mice 
It started to smell really bad in the cab. I mean, it smelt like death. So I thought, well, I'll take the seat back off. Sure enough, I see a mouse take off running right as I take the seat off. Neat. So upon further investigation, I pull the seat up. There's two dead mice on top of the compressor. There's another dead mouse on the fan. A massive mouse nest that has gotten blown up and into all the vents up the A-posts on both sides of the combine. So I wasn't getting hardly any airflow, and the airflow I was getting just, it, it smelt like death. So I pulled the dead mice out, and I put some peppermint oil in here, and some Irish spring soap, because that's supposed to keep them away. And I'm upon, upon doing that, now I'm sitting in here with the door open, because the peppermint oil is so strong, it's kind of making my eyes burn, but, you know, all in all, it's, it's better than the smell of, of mice cooking because the more they were in here, the more they'd plug off the airflow. And the more they plugged off the airflow, the hotter the fan got. And the hotter the fan got, the more it cooked the dead mice that were sitting on top of the fan. So all around, it was just, just a bad situation. I think it's a better situation now. But it still doesn't smell like great in here. But at least we've got airflow. And at least it's, you know, supposed to say in the 60s and low 70s. So I shouldn't sweat too much in the cab anymore, at least. The air conditioner is subpar. It is charged. But hopefully blowing that compressor out and, and getting all the dead stuff out. And, the, and most of what I think I could get of the mouse nests out with the air compressor blowing in here. Hopefully it's a little more enjoyable in here the rest of this fall. Well, I figured it's too wet to cut any beans, so we'd just go see what kind of trouble we can get into with the corn head today. I don't know how dry it is, but we're gonna find out, so. I don't know. We're gonna try something. Well, it is rolling in at 260, 250, 260 bushel. Kind of piling up like it's wet though, so there's a drier hybrid inside the field once I get the end rows done, so I'm hoping that, that test's a little bit drier. I'm also hoping that we make it to the end of the field here, because I don't have a good way out if we don't. And we are getting real full real quick, so I don't know. Good problem to have. So that first hopper tested 20%, so at 20% we're going to let it rip. And that was in the wetter hybrid too, so it should get drier in theory i think hopefully i don't know we're gonna send it though moving augers back to corn we go the neighbors are going that means we're gonna go too if they're rolling then i'm rolling that means everybody's rolling we got an inch and a half of rain but it didn't really stop anybody at all Christ, somebody got that grain cart full. And we are back. And it looks like the semi has already made it. He made a lap. Um, he actually went all the way around the block. That way he was headed this way. Um, so he didn't have to turn around loaded. Didn't have to drive as far loaded, I guess. But uh, the cart is extremely full. And I probably couldn't have gotten another bushel on it. It's a 525 bushel cart and it's got about 526 bushel on it. So calling that full and we're going to dive back into the cornfield. This is some of that extra high population corn where the uh, planter overlapped, but it's paying off. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's some really good corn. Apparently I should double plant all of it. I have no idea where I am at right now. I just know there's a crap ton of stuff going in the machine. So we are going to slow down. But uh, that's one way to make 300 bushel, I guess. You see, next year's planter is going to have rope clutches, so we don't have this problem. But 
I mean, I guess it's not a problem if it's making 340 bushel. I, maybe I maybe rope clutches aren't worth the money, apparently. I don't, hell, I don't know. Sure, they save seed, but look at all that extra yield. Now, there's people that have ran these combines on 12-row heads, and most people run them on 8s. And I'm pulling this machine down with a 6, but we're making 250 to 280 bushel corn all the way across the field. It's a little bit on the wet side still. I mean, it's right there at 19, between 19 and 20. It looks green, but it's really, it's drier than it looks. But uh, it's rolling in. It's rolling in real good. I like it. I like it a lot. A little bit of sprayer blight where I've ran a tire track down that row, but all in all, I am very, very happy with what this corn's making. Feels pretty good to be doing this. Nice open 100 acre field. Good, easy running. I got a cart driver, I got a semi driver. Life's good right now. But dang, somebody really got that row with the sprayer good. Yep, that is good corn. That is real good corn. Really good corn. Really good corn. Cart driver, combine driver. Cart's full, combine's full, auxiliary tank is full, and we're still waiting on a truck, and the grain bins are literally right there where they're dumping. That's good corn. That's real good corn. When you can't keep up and you're that close, that's good corn. Yeah, don't get stuck. I don't have a chain. The corner at the end of the road. Yeah. Everything's full again. So, good problem to have. We have shelled four, this is, well, what's on the cart and the combine will be the fourth semi load in not a lot of acres. All right, fourth semi of the night already. And it's only like, 9.30, and we didn't start till like seven. So for me in the little six row here, I think we're doing all right. Lost uh, lost one guy, we're down one guy right now, but we still got a cart driver. So probably gonna fill this truck and then fill the cart and the combine again, and probably call that a night. I gotta say it is very nice having these cameras see exactly what you're doing. Very nice. So we're back to rolling. Everything's, well the combine's empty, so at least we got something to, something to fill right now. But uh, corn is making really good here again. Uh, that field average is climbing up and climbing up extremely fast. Uh, I shelled some 180 bushel endros in this field that really killed it, um, but we've got 80 more acres to go and the endros are pretty much done. So from here on out, if the corn hangs in there with that, that average is going to come up real quick. Well, we shelled nine, just shy of 20 acres and uh, it's over before it started. Had a row start acting up, and next thing I know, I'm missing a snapping roll off of the corn head. So, uh, the splines are gone off the gearbox that come out on the little rod, and it worked itself loose, and it's gone. So, probably gonna have to get a new gearbox. I don't know if you can just get that shaft or not. 
but yeah, we're done shelling corn for a couple days, I'd say. Oh well, we'll get it. We'll get it fixed. We'll get it going. Again. Here's what we would be doing today if our corn head hadn't fallen apart. So we'd be shelling a little more corn, but uh, unfortunately, not gonna be doing any of that today. This is what happens when you get up at uh, 540 and it's pouring down rain when it wasn't supposed to, and you got grain bins open with fans running. Yeah. Needless to say, I'm not in a swell mood this morning. There was like a 10% chance of rain. That was it. Nothing on the radar at all. And it's it's currently pouring. Why? Welcome to Illinois, the land of high taxes and communist politics. But we are in Illinois now with a head cart behind us. Hopefully I'm not ruining the surprise, but I, uh, I bought something yesterday, but uh, we are here in the land of Lincoln and uh, crappy gun laws and high taxes. And that's why people are moving to Indiana in droves right now. Now I can crap talk the state of Illinois all I want, but man, I would love to have farm ground over here. Flat dirt, black dirt. Most of it's tiled. Yeah, there's a reason they've got grain trains this long. Good stuff over here. Be easy. A lot easier to farm this kind of dirt than it is to farm the stuff at home. But honestly, at the same time, I'd get bored over here. Because, I mean, without ditches or washouts or 18 different soil types in one field, what are you supposed to do? I mean, they hardly even have point rows here. All the fields are even square. I'd just get bored. I wouldn't know what to do with myself. Okay, we're almost home. We're between Vincennes and Washington. I uh, had a minor issue getting this home today. I, uh, I blew a tire. And when I blew the tire, the corn head fell off the head cart. It was a bad situation. So I called a tire shop. Now granted, I am 150 miles away from home when this happens. So I called a tire shop and Berkeley's Case IH dealership because I was in central Illinois. And uh, they got me fixed up. They brought a forklift out with a head mover on it because I was only like 10 miles away from them. And uh, they got it put back on for me and tire shop got a new tire fixed and thrown on so kudos to them because i was really wondering what the heck i was gonna do 150 miles from home with a corn head pretty much all but dragging the ground and a flat tire so we got it strapped down real good this time um in case it blow any more tires hopefully we don't lose the head but hopefully we just don't blow any more tires because i am very close to home at this point. I'm only like 20 minutes away, so um, I am anxious to play with this head. It is a um, eight row Capello 
head. You guys can see more when I start this clip, the next clip, because then I can actually walk around it and show it to you. But minor hiccup, but I uh, luckily had some social media friends and some friends up in central Illinois that directed me into the right place of who to call. So, um, and they also offered to come help me because they weren't too far from me. But I told, they were already in the field. I told them, stay put. I'll get it figured out. Just tell me who I need to call. And that's what they did. So, kudos to everybody that helped today because that would have been a bad situation if I got stuck 150 miles from home with a cornhead. I couldn't get to them. That would, that would suck. So, got it all figured out. Just a small hiccup, but we are about two and a half hours behind schedule now, but oh well, it, uh, life happens, so we're still going to make it home with it. That's the main thing. Okay, so we're home. There's the new shiny semi-trailer again, but I threw this adapter plate on, which I've got another one on that head, but if I sell that one to somebody that has a 2388 or anything older, they're going to want it. So I have this plate sitting here in the shed. So I'm just going to bolt it to the Capello. That way we've got the right face plate on it. Uh, the only thing I'm concerned about, is, well, there's two things actually. One is that the Capello has a 540 shaft. This combine has a hex drive shaft. So I'll have to get a different yoke for that, I think but I've been told you can actually run 540 over a hex shaft, I think, but I'm not positive. So, I don't know, I'll, I'll look into that. And then last but not least, I am concerned about latching that head because the Cabello does not have latches that fit this combine. So I may have to rig something up there. The easy thing to do for both the Cabello and the draper head, since I'm having issues keeping the draper on anyhow, would just be to put a single point hookup on though, on the combine to make it like the new style combines. So I may just do that instead. I don't know, but we'll see. Anyhow, we're gonna get hooked up here, see what happens. Morning. Today we are, uh, we're getting some dry corn out of the bin to make room for more of it. Um, I currently, I think the beans are too wet, and the corn head I bought, I'm waiting on an adapter to get it to fit the combine. So, uh, yeah, for the for the time being, I figure we'll just move some grain. I don't have enough storage to hold all of my grain this year, so I figure anytime I've got downtime, I'll try and get some of the bins empty. That way, when I am up and going and I can run, um, I've got somewhere to haul grain to. It's a lot quicker than going to an elevator. So that's why I'm empty in a bin right now. Um, I put this corn in here at 19. I didn't put it very deep. I only went about three rings high, ran a really big fan on it, and I'm pulling it out here right now, right at 15 and a half to 16%. So it's about perfect. And I didn't use any heat whatsoever. All I did was just run air on it. But as long as you don't fill these little bins too full, you can uh, get by with doing that, just running air. But it's a little bit risky too. The weather's got to be just right. So it worked this time though. So we're going to load up both trucks and haul both of them out today. 